Hello readers, welcome to the cupola aboard the International Space Station. The cupola is an awesome feature that we have on the space station that is a set of windows that looks down on Earth. And when we have free time, we can come in here to take photographs or read a book or just watch the world go by. We also use the cupola for work. Uh, sometimes we use the robotic arm to capture uncrewed cargo vehicles and place them onto the space station so we can unload the cargo. And we use these windows to look out and be able to see what we're doing. We also have flight controllers on the ground that use a special purpose dexterous manipulator on the end of the robotic arm to do some maintenance tasks on the outside of the space station. And Dexter looks a little bit like a robot. So I wanted to show you Dexter today because today I'm going to read an excerpt from a story called The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. This is a story about a robot who opens her eyes for the very first time in an unexpected place, a wilderness island. And she survives by learning to adapt and learning to act like the animals that she meets on the island, even though at first they think she's a monster. Early on in the story, she comes across an orphaned goose egg. Let's see what happens. We'll start in chapter 27, The Gosling. Something was happening inside the goose egg. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, crunch. A tiny bill poked through the eggshell, peeped once, then continued crunching away. The hole grew bigger and bigger, and then, like a robot breaking from a crate, the hatchling pulled himself out into the world. He lay quietly in his nest with his eyes closed, surrounded by chips of broken shell. And when his eyes slowly winked open, the very first thing he saw was the robot looking back. Mama! Mama! peeped the gosling. I am not your mother, said the robot. Mama! Mama! I am not your mother. Food! Food! The gosling was hungry. Of course he was. So using her friendliest voice, Roz said, what would you like to eat, little darling? Food was the only response. The hatchling was far too young to be helpful. Roz needed to find a grown goose. So she scooped up the nest with the gosling inside, placed it on her flat shoulder, and marched through the forest, searching for geese. There's the gosling in his nest. Chapter 28 is called The Old Goose. There's the old goose. Ordinarily, the forest animals would have run away from the monster, but they were awfully curious why she was carrying a hatchling on her shoulder. And once Roz explained the situation, the animals actually tried to help. A frog pointed Roz up to the squirrels. A squirrel recommended that she speak with the magpies, and then a magpie sent them over to the beaver pond. The ground grew soggier, the grass grew taller, and soon the robot and the gosling were looking across a wide, murky pond. Dragonflies buzzed through the reeds. Turtles sunned themselves on a log. Schools of small fish gathered in the shadows. And there, floating in the center of the pond, was an old gray goose. A very good morning to you, the robot's friendly voice boomed over the water. I have an adorable little gosling with me. The goose just stared. I am in great need of your assistance, said Roz. Actually, the gosling is in need of your assistance. The goose didn't move. Food, peeped the gosling. Food, food. That tiny voice was more than the old goose could bear, and she began gliding across the pond and squawking to the robot. What are you doing with that hungry hatchling? Where are his parents? There was a terrible accident, said Roz. It was my fault. This gosling is the only survivor. If there was a terrible accident, why does your voice sound so cheerful? The goose flapped her wings. Are you sure you didn't eat his parents? I am sure I did not eat his parents, said Roz, returning to her normal voice. I do not eat anything, including parents. The goose squinted at the robot. Then she said, do you know who his parents were? I do not know. Well, they must have belonged to one of the other flocks on the island because nobody in my flock is missing. Will you take the gosling? I most certainly will not, squawked the goose. I can't take in every orphan I see. You say this is your fault. It seems to me that it's up to you to make things right. Mama, mama, peeped the gosling. I have tried to tell him that I am not his mother, said the robot, but he does not understand. 
Well, you'll have to act like his mother if you want him to survive. There was that word again, act. Very slowly, the robot was learning to act friendly. Maybe she could learn to act motherly as well. You do want him to survive, don't you, said the goose. Yes, I do want him to survive, said the robot, but I do not know how to act like a mother. Oh, it's nothing. You just have to provide the gosling with food and water and shelter. Make him feel loved, but don't pamper him too much. Keep him away from danger and make sure he learns to walk and talk and swim and fly and get along with others and look after himself. And that's really all there is to motherhood. The robot just stared. Mama, food, said the gosling. Now would probably be a good time to feed your son, said the goose. Yes, of course, said the robot. What should I feed him? Give him some mashed up grass, and if a few insects get in there, all the better. Roz tore several blades of grass from the ground. She mashed them into a ball, and then she dropped the ball into the nest. The gosling shook his tail feathers and chewed his very first bites of food. By the way, my name is Loudwing, said the goose. Everyone already knows your name, Roz, but what's the gosling's name? I do not know. The robot looked at her adopted son. What is your name, gosling? He can't name himself, squawked Loudwing. And then, with a loud burst of wing beats, the goose fluttered up from the pond and landed right on Roz's head. Water streamed down the robot's dusty body as Loudwing leaned over the nest. Oh dear, he certainly is a tiny thing, said Loudwing. He must be a runt. I'll warn you, Roz, runts usually don't last very long. And with you for a mother, it'll take a miracle for him to survive. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. However, the gosling still deserves a name. Let's see here. His bill is an unusually bright color. It's actually quite lovely. If I were his mother, I'd call him Bright Bill. But you're his mother, so it's up to you. His name will be Bright Bill, said Roz, as the goose fluttered back to the water. And we will live by this pond where he can be around other geese. I will find us a sturdy tree nearby. You will do no such thing. The goose flapped her wings. A tree is no place for a gosling. Bright Bill needs to live on the ground like a normal goose. Loudwing sized up the robot. I suppose you two will need a rather large home. You'd better speak with Mr. Beaver. He can build anything. He's a little gruff at times, but if you're extra friendly, I'm sure he'll help you out. And if he gives you trouble, remind him that he owes me a favor. So Roz speaks to Mr. Beaver and he does agree to build a house for her and Bright Bill. They spend their very first night in the house in chapter 31, the first night. The stars were out. A fire was crackling in the fire pit. Roz and Brightville were settling into their first night in their new home. This lodge is where we will live from now on. The robot plucked her son from his little woven nest and placed him on the floor. I hope you like it. The gosling did like it. He liked that it was big and warm and peaceful, and he liked knowing that the forest and the pond were just outside. He waddled around, peeping to himself and exploring every little corner of the lodge until it was time for bed. His mother carefully laid him on a soft cushion of moss, but he didn't want to sleep there, so she put him back in his little nest, but he didn't want to sleep there either. Brightful looked up and said, Mama, sit. Roz sat down. Then he said, Mama, hold. Roz held him. The robot's body may have been hard and mechanical, but it was also strong and safe. The gosling felt loved. His eyes slowly winked closed and he spent the whole night quietly sleeping in his mother's arms. I hope you enjoyed the story.